Hi, my name is JP O'Connor. I'm the Director of Pro Sales for Elite Blade Performance. Today I want to talk to you about performance profiling, which is the process of custom shaping a skate blade to optimize a player's performance. As a former pro player myself, I know that everyone is looking for any edge they can get to help them play better. It doesn't matter if you play in the NHL or your local beer league. Dialing in your blade profile to meet your demands is one of the easiest things that you can do to improve your performance and help you feel great on the ice. There's been a lot more talk about profiling lately and sometimes it can be a bit daunting. In this video, I'm gonna take a bit of the mystery out of it, help you understand why profiling can help your game and also share with you some information on Elite's latest custom profiles that we're pretty excited about. So let's start by introducing some basic concepts. First, the bottom of a skate blade is not flat, it's curved. The curve's necessary to allow it to turn on the ice and to let the skater access different parts of the blade. Second, that curve is actually traditionally described as a radius expressed in feet or meters. Picture a very large circle. A skate blade will take a very small section of that circle and use it as the shape of the bottom of the blade. The longer the radius of that circle, the flatter that small section of the circle will be. Most stock skates come with a single curve along the effective skating surface, what we call a mono radius. Most stock blades come with either a 9 foot or a 10 foot mono radius curve. Now, in the game of hockey, we look for many things from our steel. We want agility, we want the ability to turn quickly and maneuver in tight spaces. We need explosion and acceleration in our first few strides. We want maximum speed and efficiency when we're skating at top speed, but we also want stability when we're battling other players or holding turns at high speed. The problem is that many of these attributes are in opposition to one another. The shape of the blade that you would want to maximize agility, for example, is the opposite shape of what you would want for stability. Now, this is the key point to take away from this. As long as we stay in the world of a mono radius curve, or in other words, a stock blade, we're stuck in a zero sum game. Meaning, whatever attributes we gain on one side come at the cost to the attributes on the other side. Does that make sense? Here's an example of how this works. Let's use a speed skate with its completely flat blade, tons of steel on the ice. It's incredibly fast and stable, but it can't turn and certainly can't stop. A figure skate with its much more curved blade and much less steel in contact with the ice is fantastically maneuverable, but it's unstable and it lacks top speed. So as long as a blade stays with a single radius curve, you're always trading off between these extremes. So let's take a stock blade. Now let's say we shorten that radius to eight foot, meaning the blade is more curved and less blade is in contact with the ice. With this blade, you would be agile as hell and have great acceleration for the first few strides, but you would lose out massively on top speed and stability. Now, Go the other direction. Let's say we lengthen that 10 foot radius to 12 feet and make the curve flatter, putting more steel on the ice. That blade would cruise beautifully and be really stable, but more heavy to move around and slow to get started. So the whole idea behind performance profiling is to strategically use multiple radius curves to fully optimize both sides of the equation. This lets us put more blade in the ice in some areas, which gives us top speed and stability and efficiency and less in other areas which boosts the agility and the explosiveness that is so vital in our game. Let's be crystal clear. Performance profiling doesn't mean there are no trade-offs to be made. Different profile families will still put more emphasis on agility, others on power and stability, but the strategic use of multiple curves let us maximize certain attributes while minimizing the cost to others. Also, very importantly, by moving these radius curves around in different combinations, we can produce profiles which perfectly fit particular skating style and natural balance point of a player. There's been many formulas tried over the years, but we see pretty much all these efforts fitting into two broad families of profiles, what we call heel glide profiles and center glide profiles. In heel glide profiles, as the name implies, the blade is actually flattened from the middle of the foot 
backwards towards the heel. So instead of a stock radius of 10 foot, you might have a 12 or a 13 or a 14 foot radius or sometimes even flatter still. Now this puts lots of steel in the ice and gives the blade excellent glide characteristics and stability. But as we said before, if we use that flat radius, the whole length of the blade, the performance would become very heavy and unresponsive. So heel glide profiles lighten up the front part of the blade with shorter radius curves to preserve the agility and the explosiveness of the whole package. There's variations of heel glide profiles and they're all produced by different manufacturers, including duos and triples and quads, but they all share the same common characteristic of starting out comparatively curved or rockered in the front and becoming flatter towards the back of the blade. And as you might expect, they all tend to give some feeling of a forward pitch, more or less depending on the specific formula used. The other broad family of performance profiles are what we call the center glide profiles. So here, an area of blade under the middle of the foot is flattened out to provide more contact with the ice surface for power, glide, stability, while towards the toe and the heel is more curved or rockered to preserve the explosiveness and the agility. Compared to heel glide profiles, center glide profiles tend to feel more neutral in pitch and balance. Within each of these profile families, there's all kinds of recipes which produce subtly different feels. Some are built with shorter radius curves and feel lighter and more agile. And some, they use flatter curves and lean toward a more solid and powerful feel. But the fundamental difference in balance points is consistent. Heel glides with the glide section further back and some feeling of a forward pitch. Center glides with the glide section more midfoot and a more neutral balance. And our profile testing with hundreds of pros and elite skaters has shown us that most players have a natural preference for one family or the other. Elite offers extensive selections of profiles in both heel glide and center glide families, but we're most excited about two designs in particular. We're excited to share that we just released a brand new heel glide profile, the Polaris, which is generating lots of excitement among pro and amateur players who've had the chance to try it out. The Polaris is a quad, but with a twist. Traditional quads move from the most curved radius in the front through progressively flatter sections towards the back of the blade. Now by contrast, the Polaris flattens out progressively through the first three sections, but then it eases off slightly near the heel. We call the Polaris the evolution of the quad because it's got all the great power and stability of a traditional quad, but with significant gains in agility and freedom of movement. We also have a proprietary center glide profile, which we think is very exciting, but has been also widely adopted by players at the NHL and professional levels as the go-to center glide profile. The SCS family uses multiple wide radius curves and smooth transitions in the midfoot area to create a long, stable base which produces great speed and power. The areas towards the toe and the heel are significantly more curved than the stock blade, giving the whole blade exceptional agility and acceleration. Elite offers the SCS1 and the SCS2, and the differences between them are subtle. Both have identical curves in the midfoot area and offer identical top speed and glide. The SCS1 has more curved sections in the toe and the heel and absolutely maxes out the agility. The SCS2 has slightly less curved toe and heel sections and a bit more stable, but overall still remains a very agile profile. So let's come back to our standard 10 foot mono blade where you're playing the compromise game. This is a decent middle of the road profile. It isn't optimized for agility and acceleration. It's, it's okay. It isn't optimized for top speed and stability, but again, it's, it's okay. You know who's not okay? You, the elite player. You'd never want your results to be described as okay. I know from having spoken to players before my time, I know how I felt and I know from seeing and speaking with many of you that we are all our own worst critics and that okay doesn't sit well with us. Performance profiles like the popular SCS family and the evolution of the quad and the Polaris family, they add more to your blades, more agility, more power, more stability in whatever combination suits you the best. 
At the professional level, you have access to profiling and the best equipment managers in the world who can help you dial in your customized blade recipe. Your profile is out there, and if you haven't already, I'd encourage you to find it. I hope this video has been a helpful resource, but for more information, please consult your equipment manager or our website for complete profile descriptions and rankings, or contact us if you have any questions. I'll see you around the rinks.